If you want to see someone who doesn't know what they're doing not fix a motherboard, that's what this crap is. I saw this broken motherboard advertised for 10 bucks, and that's right in my tight-ass low-income range. So two hours driving later and I own it. The guy said this is dead dead, and he took it to a repair shop, but they couldn't fix it. It was probably one of these plug-in plug-out shops rather than a component level repair shop. This board is an Asus Maximus 7 Ranger. This is not my motherboard and I don't know the history of it so the first thing you have to do is check it for shorts. Basically you don't want components to go up in smoke when you plug power into it. We'll try the auxiliary 12 volts first. The capacitors take time to charge but it's over 1k ohm. Usually all the 12 volt pins are connected together but I check them in groups of 4 just in case they're separated. Next we go for the 24 pin ATX connector. We'll go for the 3 volts and it's over 1k. Next is 12 volts and it's getting up to 3k. We'll try standby 5 volts. It's okay at over 4k. Next is 5 volts. Getting up to 4k. We'll try 3 volts again. Still plenty good. We'll try the 5 volts on this side. Okay at over 3k. We try the negative 12 volts down here and that's weird. It's not reading anything. Is this a redundant pin like the negative 5 volts or is there something wrong here? And the last 3 volt. And it's fine. Let's now check that negative 12 volt pin. I checked another board and there is a reading. Let's go to the board view and click on that 12 volt pin and we see this thing light up and it shows a part with no info. Let's see what else is connected. And there's something down here. It's connected to this part but there's no info on it either. And that's connected to this pin on this part but there's no info on this either. Now we know why there's no info on the parts because they're not populated. So I checked more motherboards and 3 had the minus 12 connected but 1 didn't. So I guess this motherboard doesn't have it. I guess now we go for the visual inspection. I can see green on some pins and it looks like corrosion from water spilling on copper. These pins look okay from the top but when you angle the board you can see the pins are bent. I can also see a weird line on this chip that continues up the board. And if you look up here you can see more lines like there's a water spill. It looks like this guy's liquid cooling stuffed the board. I can fix the pins but I don't know about the liquid damage because I'm not an expert in that field. I know water damage will evaporate without residue but thick liquids like coffee and coke will dry under chips and continue the short. This looks like a thin liquid that probably doesn't short so I'm going to continue without washing the board. We'll install the battery and see if the power is getting through. Negative is grounded on this can. We have 3.1 volts on our battery so there's no short pulling it down. We put our digital multimeter in microamp current mode, put the probe on the battery positive, then push the connector away so it disconnects from the battery and goes through the multimeter. And we see 6 microamps of current draw. If it's zero, something's not connected, and if it's much more, there's a short. We find the battery and click on the positive, then we click through all the lit up parts until a major group light up near the chipset. Now we'll check the motherboard to see if we're getting battery voltage from here and here. I see 3 volts over here, and 3 volts over here. We can also check the crystal to see if it has power and it's oscillating. And it shows about 33 kilohertz. Now that we know there's no shorts on the ATX input rails, let's see what happens when we turn it on. Yep, it's dead dead. Let's see what happens when we unplug the auxiliary at 12 volts. And we have fan spin. Now we know there's something wrong with the auxiliary 12 volt line. The most common failure is the VRMs, but on my ASRock it was a MOSFET near the RAM. Well I took the VRM heat sinks off and I'm not seeing much. I checked the MOSFETs and they're over 1k on this side and 30 ohm on the other side. So there's not really shorts in any of them. I don't actually know how the motherboard systems work, but thinking logically, it's not starting with the 12 volt auxiliary connected, but will start with the 12 volt disconnected. Maybe with the auxiliary 12 volt connected it sees a fault, like a short or no voltage, so it tells it not to start. But when it's disconnected, there's no power to the part generating the fault, so it sees no fault. An open break is probably the harder one to find, because you kind of need the thing running to measure if there's a voltage missing. If you're smart and know the systems, you probably know which rail to chase down, but for a dummy like me, I wouldn't know where to start. Shorts are easier to find, because you can do a static test with a multimeter, but if you're going in blind, without a clue of anywhere where it could be, it seems like way too much effort to check every single passive on this board for a double ground on both ends of the part. But then I had an idea on how to do a lot of parts fast. And if you think about it, you don't have to check both sides of a passive to check it. Because if one side doesn't beep, you don't have to check the other side because it can't be a double ground. Basically you only have to check the other end if the first end beeps. And only get concerned when the reading is very low on both ends. Like this one. I checked every part on this board. And this one has a double short. This is a zero ohm resistor. And one side's connected to this D ground. If D ground is another ground plane, of course it's going to buzz on both sides. 
There's a whole bunch of caps that straddle the LED light tube in the PCB, and that double buzzes. And if you look at the part, one side is ground, and the other side is A ground, which I assume is audio ground. It's probably some audio ground loop thing. This one I'm not exactly sure, because this board view is a later version and slightly different from mine. This one's not even shown in the board view. To be safe, I pulled those three parts, but it made no difference, so I just put them back. I don't know what I did, but constantly pressing the start button and it partially starts. It could be because I scraped a bit of corrosion off a few resistors, or it just has a delay start in this state and you need to mash the start button a few times. I did remove three double short parts, but I put them back and it still semi-starts. It'll boot loop a lot of times before you get constant fan, but if you look at the BIOS post display, it just gets stuck on double zeros, meaning there's no BIOS activity. I checked the temps of all the chips and MOSFETs, but none are getting hot. The chipset and the CPU get mildly warm, so something's happening. And if you look near the power connector, CPU LED is red. Now that it's semi-running, we can check the voltage at each inductor, and we get 1.75 volts. We have power at all CPU VRMs, and up here we're seeing 12 volts. Over here we see 5 volts. And these two we're seeing 1.5 volts. And this tiny one is 3.3 volts. All the rails seem to be there, so I guess we can check if the crystals are working. I checked the crystals and they're a bit screwy, because they read 50 Hz instead of 25 Meg. But that changes on some reboots. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, but I don't really know what to do about it. I went back to voltages, and because I can't see nothing wrong with the main rails, I started looking for voltages on the smaller nets. I don't really know what the voltages are supposed to be, but I started with the linear regulators, and they all had voltage on the pins. Next I went for the actual input voltages of chips, and I'm seeing voltages all over the board. I then went to check fuses, and they all seem to be okay. This is where I started running out of ideas. I've got no shorts, I've got voltages everywhere, and nothing gets hot. So I went for the simplistic slash desperate Tech Yes City wash the board, but the motherboard is exactly the same. Woo, forward to the future. Not that I think it's a voltage missing problem anymore because the thing starts, but there is a way to check all the voltage rails and voltage nets accurately. Just click on nets and it shows you all the rails and nets and their voltages. Then all you have to do is click on one and then probe the board on a few places on it and see if it matches the voltage stated. And the thing about the list is it shows you the rails and the nets. Like this is the major 5 volt rail, but the one below, the 5 volt USB, could be a branch off that 5 volt rail. That could give you a hint to a problem, because if you see 5 volts coming in, but not 5 volts going out, you can narrow it down to a part. I did check every single power net on this board, and some looked a little bit weird, but nothing I couldn't explain. Like two nets were missing voltages, but they were missing parts in that area too. This is where I've run out of ideas. I'm not getting any shorts, nothing gets hot, and there's voltages everywhere. And that means it falls in the too hard to find basket. As an example, maybe it's a crack in the solder joint of a resistor that's a part of a voltage divider that the PCH uses to recognise a fault, i.e. it's a false positive because it's the sensor circuit, not the actual circuit. Either way, I spent weeks doing this three months ago, so rather than waste all that work, I'll put out the video. Basically, you can't win them all, even though I'm still looking into this thing.